Hey guys, it's me, Ralph, again. I'm just here, uh, gonna bring forth out of the book of Acts, chapter 17. So you get a, a double header. <laughs> you get 16 and 17 from me. Uh, what an honor and a privilege it is to be able to even share the word of God. Uh, and again, just the whole purpose of what I share is what's that practical application? So, like I shared in Acts, chapter 16, uh, that Paul and Silas were relentless. They had this spirit to say, you know what, no matter what comes our way, no matter persecution, you know, when it says in the Corinthians, it pressed down, um, but not destroyed, struck down, but not forsaken. So, you know, having this mentality of no matter what comes in our path, no matter what we're going through, uh, the whole purpose of why we're doing what we're doing is to be able to share the gospel, to be able to spread this word, this good news. And, and you know, that's the question I would ask you. You know, if you're born again today and Jesus is the Lord of your life, and, you know, again, we're not perfect. We're going to fall short. We're going to have our shortcomings. But is Jesus good news to your life today? Is what you have and what you know about Jesus, is that good news? Is that something worth sharing with others? Do you have the hope? You know, I can remember when I first gave my life to Jesus, you know, knowing that what I was, the way I was living was wrong and knowing that the best way to live because the way I was raised, I was taught that the importance of, you know, what Jesus did, the sacrifice he made on the cross, that he, he died and on the third day he rose from the dead. But yet still I was doing my own thing and living my own way. And finally, when I completely surrendered, that fire that filled my heart, the Holy Spirit that just filled me and it completely changed my outlook on salvation my outlook on living for Jesus and though I fell short I just made purpose in my heart that I would not give up I would always in any opportunity no matter even if I was a hypocrite I, I just couldn't keep it quiet I had to share the good news of Jesus Christ of course, you know, none of us want to be hypocrites, but, you know, we all, again, all fall short. We all uh, are in need of Jesus every single day. That Jesus is not for yesterday or not for tomorrow. He's for today. And uh, this is what he says in Matthew, right? When he says that, you know, uh, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these things will be added on to you. Matthew 6, 33. And, you know, just worry about today. Why are we concerning ourselves about tomorrow? And so here we are. I just want to, I want to go into Acts chapter 17 now and just spend just a couple minutes of, of some of the things that I gleaned off of 16 and, and into 17. But here uh, in verse 40 of 16, it says, So Paul and Silas, the Amplified Version, left prison and went to Lydia's house. And when they had seen the brethren, they were warned and urged and, con and consoled and encouraged, and then they departed. Again, man, Paul and Silas were always on the move. Listen, they there were no temples. There were no churches. This, this, this wasn't a legacy church of Trojas or legacy church of Ephesus. or there, there was no buildings. These guys had a mission, and that mission was to get people to open up their homes and invite people in and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, as long as you know who Jesus is and what God has called uh, you to do, which is share the good news, you know, go you therefore, preach the gospel, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey. And listen, that's all of our calling. And yes, we do that in different facets. We do that in different vocations. We do it in the marketplace. Some of us do it full time, like Pastor Max. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that all of us have this mandate to share the good news. So the question I want to pose to you is the good news, the good news to you today is the good news burning on the inside of you where you're willing to say, you know what? I have to share this with somebody. Lord, open up the door, open up the opportunity that I can share, because I believe that this is what Paul and Silas were doing. They weren't concerned themselves with building a building or building an edifice. What they were concerned about is reaching souls. Paul had a mandate from Jesus that he would suffer persecution. He would suffer greatly. And he knew that because, again, in all these stories, what we're seeing is Paul and Silas suffering for the sake of the gospel. But they didn't consider themselves. They didn't let that become a distraction. They didn't let that stop them from sharing the good news. What they did is they used that as fuel even more. Because they knew that part of the mandate, part of the call in their life was that they would suffer. And this is what Jesus said, right? He said, listen, blessed are those, blessed are you when you are insulted and persecuted and, and false and all kinds of false sayings and evil things are said about you. 
So blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. So this is what we're seeing. We're seeing, again, the Holy Spirit move. We're seeing these two men who are obeying the Holy Spirit. And we're seeing this tenacity that they have to share the good news because inside of them what they have is the good news of Jesus Christ and they cannot be silent I love in the book of Jeremiah when you read the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah who they call the weeping prophet uh, struggled with some of the messages that God gave him and even when he struggled he would say listen there came a point when he said I don't want to share this good news and listen I've been to that point where he said I don't want to share this good news anymore I don't want to share this gospel I don't want to share the word of the Lord and then he would go on to say further on I don't know where the scripture is exactly but the word of God is shot up in my bones like fire and I cannot keep silent see listen guys when we've experienced Jesus I don't know if you're struggling. I don't know if you're facing difficulties. I don't know what's happening. But listen, God is reshaping the church. He's reframing how the church should be. We're no longer meeting uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a building. But we're meeting maybe uh, via Zoom, uh, via Facebook, via some, uh, uh, um, you know, through the phone, uh, uh, FaceTime, whatever it is, whatever avenue that God has given us to meet, we cannot forsake us meeting together. Why? Because it's going to build us up. It's going to encourage us. And this is what I see what Paul and Silas are doing. Their mission is to share this gospel. And they're taking it to as many people as they can. And we see it here early in the verses of 17 when they go into this this city into the city and they're sharing the gospel and as they're sharing the gospel they get persecuted people rise up against them and they begin to get attacked and and and, uh, and beat uh, just like they did in verse 16 here again in verse 17 they're facing again difficulties they're facing persecution but guess what they don't do they don't quit yeah they may flee the city for their own life's sake because it's not their time because, you know, Paul is very aware that he's going to lose his life for Jesus. He's very, very aware that, he, that, that him sharing the gospel of Jesus will cost him his life sooner or later. But he knows that it's not his time yet. And yet, it's with that tenacity, with that relentlessness, that him and Silas continue to share the gospel. And I just want to challenge you guys. I know that you may be listening to me and you say, man, Rob, why are you repeating yourself from verse 16? Because the story is the same. The story is carrying on. What we're seeing here is how God is using by the Holy Spirit, using Paul and Silas to move the gospel forward, move it forward, no matter what comes our way. And what I want to challenge you guys is this, you know, what is God telling you to do in your heart today? You know, I, I remember this gentleman that I, uh, that when we were young in the Lord, man, he had this, this fire, Mark Hebenbrand. He had a fire for, uh, he's the pastor, associate pastor of House of Praise International. We got saved around the same time. And to this day, uh, even back then in the early uh, 90s, he had this passion to just share the gospel, share the good news. And every week, it never would fail, he would bring somebody new to the church. And that challenges me today. You know, what am I doing today? That was 26 years ago, 27 years ago. And he, I could witness, I could see this guy who was a Catholic. All of a sudden, he gets radically saved, just like Paul and Silas. Has this encounter with the Holy Spirit. And all he, can, he cannot keep silent. And this is what I see here in Acts. Because the Holy Spirit has sealed them. The Holy Spirit has come upon them. And they become witnesses. Acts 1.8. That you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And this is the manifestation right here, guys. This is what we're seeing. Paul and Silas are determined to share the gospel with everyone that would listen. And I love that they would go into the house, into the Jew, into the Jewish uh, synagogues first. And if they wouldn't listen, they would, they would go into the city. And here we see that he, Paul in 17 goes into Athens. And again, he gets questioned by these Greeks and their mythology. And they're, again, they're, they're, um, they are uh, full of knowledge, right? They're Gnostic. They have Gnosticism as their belief system. They believe that knowledge and wisdom and all these gods will save them. And Paul calls them out and he says, uh, this, this statue that you have to the unknown God, you look for this person, you, you've, you've put this unknown God statement on this statue. But let me tell you, this unknown God, let me tell you, let me introduce you to who he is. 
His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's able to save and deliver. And he begins to give them, again, an apologetic message of Jesus. You guys, in this time, there's no excuse why we don't know the word. There's no excuse why we're not spending time in the word. There's no excuse of why we're not praying. Because God wants to speak to us. God wants to use us. He wants us to be that mouthpiece in whatever way we can think of, whatever creative way we can think of, whether it's through Instagram, Facebook. I'm not on those things. Uh, my my uh, avenue that Max has given me is through uh, this, through YouTube, and, and allowing me to share the word with you guys this way. And if you guys share with others, then that's the opportunity. But let me tell you guys something. Uh, God has given us an opportunity to be creative in how we share the word. So let's not be afraid. Let's not be ashamed. Let's ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, just like you use Paul and Silas to share your word, to move uh, the ball, if you want to say it, like football, I love football analogies. And like you use Paul and Silas to move the chains, move the ball forward. Uh, just 10 more yards. Lord God, use, use me to move the ball forward. Lord, that I will be able to fight this fight. So that when it's all said and done, I say, like Paul said in Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have ran my race. I have finished my course. And so listen, guys, this is what we're seeing here. This is what we're seeing manifested is that Paul and Silas had an encounter with Jesus. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And with that filling, there came a boldness so that they can share the gospel. And no matter what came down their path, no matter what persecution, no matter if they lost their jobs, no matter if they were thrown in jail, no matter what they faced, you guys, they, they had a tenacity and a relentlessness and knew that God will always take care of them. Listen, guys, God will always take care of us as long as we're putting him first and doing his will first. Thank you guys for tuning in today and taking a moment out with me. I really do appreciate it. I just want to encourage you. Just ask the Holy Spirit, God, what is it you want me to do in this time? Who do you want me to reach in this season? Who do you want me to pray for? Who do you want me to reach out to, Lord God? Just be sensitive, guys. Just be sensitive. We have this opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. Thanks for listening.